Welcome today to Outpouring from the Throne Room of God with Ty and Betsy Tice. Our podcast today is Can You Believe What You Cannot See? Our scripture passage today comes from Romans 4, 16 through 18, and we are reading from the Message Bible. This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way, and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives as pure gift. That's the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. For Abraham is father of us all. He is not our racial father. That's reading the story backward. He is our faith father. We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in the scripture? God says to Abraham, I set you up as a father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became the father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Rise the dead to life with a word, make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to Abraham, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Let's look at the eyes of the flesh. By the eyes of the flesh, I mean viewing from a flesh or a natural position. Romans 8, 5, those who live according to a sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of a sinful man is death but the mind of a controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's will, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. This natural vision allows us only to see from our own past, our own distortion, and our own natural position. Paul said that we see as though looking through dark glass, sunglasses. We see as though we are mere men. We only see in part and not the whole picture. Sometimes we see what we want to see. If we make our daily decisions based on the eyes of the flesh, we will not act on the scriptural principles which God has led before us. Let's go back and let's consider, in fact, Abraham and Sarah. To my understanding, Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90. This was well past the time of bearing children. And yet when God said, you're gonna be the father of many nations, He believed. He didn't doubt in his heart. Time and again, we walk as though by sight rather than by God's will. We see things and we think that's how it's going to be. There's no choice. Every one of us, you and I included, have found in our life a place whereby we have not been in a position to fulfill the position that God wanted for us 
And yet, despite what man said, despite what our own thoughts said, despite in who we thought we were, God said, you're going to do this. When God called me to be a pastor and then a bishop over an organization, according to man, man's standard, I didn't qualify. I hadn't been to school. In fact, I hated school. But what God said is, I've got a special school for you. That didn't mean I didn't go back and accommodate man's desires. I did. But that was after what God said he was going to do, not what we were going to do by our own natural eyes. When in stress or under intense pressure, acting on a fleshly vision will cause us to act ungodly and make foolish decisions. How many foolish decisions have you made? Come on, brothers and sisters, be honest with it. We all make dumb mistakes and God overlooks them because God knows who he created, not what we're dumbly doing at some times. Following after fleshly visions will allow us to be led astray and deceive and be deceived with our own agendas made up by logic and emotion. God doesn't operate on those bases. Understand, please, we cannot do both. I think very often of the song in the part that we're going to get into, because if we're doing it God's way, we're doing it by faith. We're not doing it by what we know. We, we're not even doing it by what we can see. We are doing it because God has spoken into our spirit through his spirit. And we know without a shadow of a doubt, there's an old, old song. And it goes like this. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure. From all alarms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on his everlasting arms. When you're thinking of the arms of Jesus, what are you thinking of? We, we can't see his arms, but we know when we're in a confidence with him. I have never seen the face of God, but I know that he is in me. I know that it's not me, but it's him. That's what it means when it says leaning on his everlasting arm. His arm, my brother and sister, is holding you. It's holding you fast. The vision of faith is hope. Think of the scripture. We all know it so well in Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidenced by things not seen. Wow. In other words, if I'm in Jesus, I'm operating in faith. That's by things that I haven't seen yet. I have no idea, but God does. So that's good enough. Faith moves forward without natural vision, yet not blindly. Faith acts on an absolute that not only did God say it, that God can do it, but that God will do it. The arm of faith, therefore, is acting not on want, what is seen, but on what is not seen, even calling that which is not as though it were. Leaning on the arms of faith is your natural vision. Tells you one thing. And the word of God tells you something entirely different. It is in the arm of faith that we find our strength. We find our ability. It is in the arm of faith that we stand on Zechariah 4, 6. It says, not by might, 
nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Do not be deceived by what things look like. When we lean on the arm of faith, it allows the Lord to take us through what naturally appears to be dangers or even allurements without distraction. If one depends on the eye of flesh, they will never see the glory of God. Even if they saw something manifest from the Lord, they would explain it away as paranormal. We see that today. The world is so fast to explain away with sci-fi, with fiction, and everything else, the things of God, because they don't want to hear it. The experiences of one who leans on the arms of faith are many. The disciples learn not to depend upon the eyes of the flesh, but rather to learn to lean on the arm of faith as they watch Jesus in his earthly ministry. Paul learned to lean on the arms of faith from his experiences in suffering and in righteous, for righteousness sake and being imprisoned. Today, we learn to lean on the arm of faith through our daily experiences that we are allowed to face in our lives. What does it mean to lean on the arms of faith? It means seeing everything from God's perspective. Leaning on the arm of faith can make the difference between life and death. We must see sin as God sees it. When God says to put something to death, he means to do that very thing. When God says to get rid of something, he means that very thing. I know when I first came back to the Lord, I had a lot of garbage that I had to throw out, and God demanded it of me. When God says not to touch something, he means not to touch it. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to get on your case here. If you are living with someone without the benefit of marriage before a covenant before God, stop it. You're touching something God doesn't want you to touch. God says, this is the path that I'm giving you. Take it. Then that is the path that we must take and to live by that path. When God says, if you eat this or that, you will surely die, you would better believe what he has said. When God says, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you will live, you would better believe. When God says, walk in my ways and I will care for you and protect you, you had better walk in his way. When God says, give me the tithe, the first fruits of all your prosperity, he means for us to do just that. I want to step in here. How important is that? Because when you do that, it literally opens up the windows of heaven for his blessings to pour out that the scripture says you can't even hold them. There's so many. Kind of like when Jesus told Peter, lower down the nets. And they lowered it down, and the nets couldn't hold the fish. Why? Because he was obedient. That's why we tithe. We don't tithe because God needs your money. That's a joke. We tithe because it is his key that he wants us to use to open his floodgates. Do you want his floodgates, or do you want your existence? Come on, guys, be real with yourself here. When God says, this is my way, walk in it and forsake your own agenda, he means for us to forsake our own lives and follow him. It means leaning, means learning how to lean on the arm of faith. How do we do it? It's very simple. Through God's word. Romans 10, 17, consequently, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Through self-discipline, Romans 6, 11, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. 12, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. 13, do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, 
but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. Three, through obedience. Romans 6, 16. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Through love, Romans 12, 9. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. And 13.8. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. So let's go through it one more time. How do we learn to lean? Through God's word through self-discipline, through obedience, and then finally through love. Brothers, let us love one another as Christ has loved us. God bless you and go with you this day. Thank you.